In this tutorial we're going to show you how to use one of the specialist layout tools for rotary applications. We're going to show you how to use the fluting layout gadget tool to automatically create the vectors that will then be machined to produce the fluted column you can see on the screen. Well this project represents where we're heading towards so we're going to start by closing this project down and creating a new file. So file close and then create new file and in this case we will select a rotary job type so single sided double sided rotary is selected a job size rather than x and y distances we have length and diameter in this case it's going to be a 12 inch length and 3 inch diameter a z0 position uh, this will depend really on how you want to set this for your particular machine but in this case it will be easier for us to come off the at the center of our cylinder rather than the top of the uh, material since we may not know the exact circumference and our XY datum will be in the lower left hand corner. Our orientation in this case, now once again this will depend on your machine. Uh, for ours, linear axis is along the X axis and we will actually be wrapping the Y values. Uh, but alternatively, you could select along the Y axis if your linear axis is along the Y and in that case you would be wrapping the X values. Our modeling resolution will keep this at very high and we'll click OK to create our new job. So we have our new job space, but of course we don't have any vectors created in order to start creating the fluting toolpath. Well, this is where the fluting gadget comes into play and the fact it will be a far easier way for us to create the vectors to then create the fluted layout that we need. So that can be accessed from the gadget. So this will be open to those of you that uh, use VCarve Pro or Aspire. So if we select the gadgets now and underneath here we have wrapping and we have the fluted layout. So this will pop open a form now, one of the gadget tools, with a brief explanation of how it works and a number of parameters before clicking on OK, which will create the necessary vectors. In this case, we're gonna be picking a, a model that will have six flutes. We can also end those flutes from the start and end. In this case, I've specified that as one inch from either end. And of course, we can have coves at either end that will intersect with the end of the flutes. And these are currently switched on. And as soon as I OK that now, we'll suddenly see some vectors drawn on the screen. Now, this can be done manually. You can sketch that out yourself. But if you notice one of the key items, if I select the fluted vectors, is the fact that it's made sure that we've got half of one flute at either end. So when it's wrapped round, we've got a nice even gap between all our flutes. So it just takes a little bit of the mathematics away and uh, automatically creates that. And of course, it's created the coves here to intersect at the end of the flutes. So with this now, I'm ready to move across to the uh, machining. But actually, first we'll take a look at what has actually been created on what layers. If we hit the drop down now, you've got a number of extra layers that have been created, including the zero plane. Uh, we've got the bounding box, which is just around the outside, which we don't need to use in this particular case. But we have two key layers, which are fluting vectors and co-vectors. So the fluting vectors, you can see, are in the center. And then we've got our co-vectors, which border those fluting vectors. OK, so with that, I'm just going to come back now and move across to the toolpathing menu. And our first step is to check our material setup. So by selecting set, we have a number of the parameters that we'd already entered actually in the job setup. So our diameter is three. Our X, Y datum is the lower left hand corner. Our Z zero will be at the center of the cylinder. The model position in material, we don't have to worry about this because we're not unwrapping a 3D model or introducing maybe some flat 3D relief that we're going to wrap onto here. So we don't need to deal with this part of the form, but we should be aware of our rapid Z gaps and our home and start positions. And they should be sort of reflected depending upon the stock you're using and the material, etc. So I'm just going to OK that now. And we're now in a position to move over to the machining. Now, in this case, I don't need to differentiate between the fluting vector and the cove vectors. So in this case, I'm going to shift and pick the uh, cove vectors. So we've selected all the vectors on the screen, which I could have done with Control A on the keyboard. And then I'm going to come across and select the profile toolpath. So I'm going to pick that up now. And the first thing we need to decide is uh, what the depth will be. So in this case, our start depth will be zero. 
uh, because we're starting from the top of the material and our cut depth will be just 0.2 of an inch okay now with respect to the tool I'm actually going to pop open the tool database and I'm going to select my half inch ball so I'll select that which will automatically extract the parameters and decide how many passes will be needed we now need to decide on the way in which we're going to be machining the vectors, whether we're going to be machining outside, inside, or on. In this case, we want to machine directly along them, okay? And then moving down, where there are a number of other parameters that we can add, but I'm just going to come down to now say uh, profile flutes. And with that, I'm now going to calculate that toolpath. Now this will flip me into the 3D view, so if we actually show them uh, top and bottom, so we can see the tool path in the 2D view and the tool path in the 3D view. And of course I can play the simulation there just to show the selected tool path. And as you notice there, you could see it being flattened out, the simulation generated and then rewrapped. This is because actually until we go to post this particular tool path out, we are actually dealing with a standard three axis toolpath and if I show that by switching on the profile flutes uh, in the 3d view and then come up to toggle the wrapping you'll see actually that we have a standard three axis job with a standard three axis toolpath okay and the simulation which is where I switch that on from to go from 2d to 3d this is purely a visual representation it does not reflect the fact that we have a wrapped toolpath that is only taken care of when we come to post the toolpath out okay and if we select a non post a non rotary post then of course we will just get a standard three axis toolpath okay so with that we now need to consider the posting so I'm just going to have this full size for the 3d and I, you can see the toolpath on the screen I'm going to close out of my simulation now and come into the save toolpath so with this um, I now need to make sure the correct post is selected you can see that we've already added our profile flutes into the list that will be um, exported and I now need to select the relevant post processor. In this case, I'm gonna go down and select a Mac 3 post, and I'm aware in this particular case that we are wrapping the Y values. So, okay, so our linear axis is X, and we're wrapping our Y values. So I'll select that now, and then go to Save Toolpass, in which case we could then save that out as a file, which will just replace the current one. And we've now created a G code file suitable for a machine where the X axis is linear, we're wrapping the Y, and it happens to be a Mac 3 control. I'm now going to close out of that form, okay? And the final thing I'm going to sort of do before I move on is really look to save the part. So file, save as, and I'm just going to come up now and save that as a CRV file. And of course, I can reopen that at a later point in order to post that out. But what we've seen today really is the fact that we there is a, a cool fluted gadget tool which enables you to automatically create the vectors suitable for creating this type of column you see on the screen. It takes care of the spacing, etc., and makes sure that all the vectors are placed on the correct levels. But this can be done manually without the use of the gadget. Okay, it's just the fact the gadget does make it a little easier. Okay.